Good evening. I hope you've had a great day. God has truly been good, and we've been blessed beyond abundance. Me and Miss Kim, we just thank God for his goodness and mercy every day of our life and what he's done. I ask today that you continue to pray for my dear friend Mike and Teresa Blanton. Mike will be going back to the doctors in the morning to see the doctor. He'll tell him then what they're going to have to do. I know that God is in control, but I know that God hears our prayers and answers our prayers. We need to pray for our country and pray for our president during these most difficult times of our life. Hi, Miss Maddie. It's good to see you this evening as people begin to tune on and uh, God is so good. It's sending me a message. I hope you can see me. If you can see me, let me know. It's saying something about the uh, computer's not online, but it says it's online. And if you can see me, somebody say yes, you can see me and hear me. And uh, we do love the Lord, and God is so good. And we thank Him for His goodness and mercy every day. Today's devotion is the challenges of obeying God or not to obey God. And a lot of times we don't understand things, but we know that God is able. I see a yes there from somebody. They can see me and hear me. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Maddie, for saying yes. Take your Bible and go to Psalms 31 and 14, and then we'll be going over to 1 Kings chapter 17 in just a little bit there. But today in Psalms 31 and 14, before we pray, I want to read this to you. And here's what it said. But I trust in the Lord, O Lord, I said, Thou art my God. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for another beautiful day in life that you have given us. Lord, I pray today for the outpouring of of the Holy Spirit. I pray for our people today, God. I pray, Lord, that you would anoint them today as only you can. I pray today for my dear friend Mike Blanton and Teresa. I pray, God, that you would touch Mike as only you can. I pray for Orville and Brenda. I pray for Jason and Melissa. I pray for all of those that are going through this cancer today. I pray for Tom and Irma. I pray, God, for Melissa, God. I pray that you would touch her, God, as only you can. Lord, there's so many today that needs a touch of the Master's hand. Every morning and every night, we pray, God, that your will bless America. God, help us to turn from our wicked ways. And, oh, God, help us to turn to you. For, Lord, you're the only hope and the only answer that we have today is you. Bless our people. Add to the reading of thy word today. Help us, Lord, to accept the challenges, to obey. Help us not to be disobedient, but help us to be obedient under your heavenly command. For it is in Christ's name we pray, and amen. I thought of this uh, earlier and yesterday evening and late last night as I began to look into the Word of God. And in Second Kings chapter 17, I'm sure you've heard it many times about the goodness of God and the, the mercy of Almighty God. But I know that God is good and he is able to do all things. But Elijah here, and here's what the Word of God said, And Elijah the Tishbite, who was of the inheritance of Gilead, said unto Ahab the king, As the Lord God of Israel liveth, before whom I stand, there shall neither be dew nor rain these years, but according to my word. In other words, Elijah said to Ahab, It ain't going to rain, my friend. I'm not going to, God's not even going to let it get dew upon the land or water at all. And the word of the Lord come unto him, saying, Get thee hence and turn thee eastward toward, toward, toward the east, and hide thyself by the brook Kidron, that is before Jordan. And, he, and it shall be that ye shall drink of the brook. I have commanded the raven to feed thee. Now, I don't know about you, but I've thought about that many a time. Now, Elijah had a, a, ch a choice, either to obey God or not obey God. God tells him to go down and get beside the brook and drink. Now, there's water there. But he said, I've commanded the raven. In other words, I've told the, the bird to bring you bread and flesh that you may eat. Now, I don't know about you. Uh, I'd have a pretty hard time with that myself. I would kind of be, uh, Lord, is there another way we can do this? Is there an easier way besides you sending that bird down here? I'm not uh, crazy about having a bird deliver my food. You better think about what you're saying and what you're thinking about. 
God is in control of all things. So he went and did according to the word of the Lord. For he went and dwelled by the brook Kidron that is before Jordan. And the raven brought him bread and flesh in the morning and bread and flesh in the evening. And he drank of the brook. And it came to pass after a while that the brook dried up because there had been no rain in the land. Now you think about that. Elijah, if he had not commanded and been obedient to God and accepted God, he would not have been able to have the food and the raiment and everything that he had. And he sure wasn't going to be able to lay neath the brook and drink of the cool water that was there. But by being obedient, God took care of him. Now notice this. The water dried up. God's not done. And notice what it said. And the word of the Lord come unto him, saying, Arise and get thee to Zephron, which is be, belong to Zadok, and dwell there. Behold, I have commanded a widow woman there to sustain thee. Now there's a little widow woman, and God said, Hey, I want you to take care of the man of God when he comes. Now, he could have told her this in the beginning of the famine. He could have told her before the meal ran out, before the oil got down to the bottom of the barrel, before the drought was so bad, he could have said to her, listen, the man of God's going to be coming by here, and I want you to take care of him. Whatever he tells you to do, you do, and I will take care of you. Now, when you've got plenty of flour, and you've got plenty of oil, and you've got plenty of water, you're not going to be... Uh, too selfish, you're going to share it with someone. But when you got just a little bit, notice she didn't have a lot when the man of God showed up. But listen, and he went, so he arose and went to Zephyr. And when he come to the gate of the city, behold, the widow woman was gathering sticks. And he called to her and said unto her, Fetch me, I pray thee, a little water in a vessel that I may drink. Now, she didn't complain about the water. She must have had more water than she needed. And as she was going to fetch it, he called to her and said, Bring me, I pray thee, a morsel of bread that I may eat. And she said, As the Lord thy God liveth, I have not a cake, but a handful of meal in a barrel, and a little oil in a cruise. And behold, I am gathering two sticks that I may go in and dress it for me and my son, that we may eat and die. In other words, there's none left. I don't have a cake. I've got a handful. You're asking for something I don't have. But notice what the man of God said to her. And Elijah said unto her, Fear not. Fear not. Go and do as thou hast said, but make me there a little cake. He still insisted on a cake. The man of God says, hey, make me a cake first and bring it unto me and after make thee and for thy son. Now she just told him she don't have a cake. She don't even have a handful. He's asking for a little cake and then go back and make more. But notice what the man of God said. Here's where obedience comes in and faith in the word of God. For, thou sa for thus saith the Lord God of Israel, the barrel of meal shall not waste. Neither shall the cruise of all fail unto the days that the Lord sendeth rain upon the earth. And she went and did according to the saying of Elijah. And she and her house ate many days. And the bear of meal wasted not, neither did the cruise of all fail according to the word of the Lord which Elijah spoke. Let me say this to you. They've been a lot of songs written and a lot of things. But when she quit dipping in her barrel and began to dip in God, that's when God began to bless. It's called being obedient. And listen, sometimes God challenges us to obey him or ask us to do things that it seems to be impossible to do. But see, God knows exactly what you're able of doing. And God said, if you'll just get out of the way and let me show you that I'm God. Sometimes our reasoning and circumstances with the situation, we want to analyze it, look at it, and say, Lord, it's impossible to do that. With you and I, it is impossible. But with God, all things are possible. We just need to learn to stop and praise God and thank Him for the goodness that He's given to us. Now, if 
happened is the widow woman had not obeyed Elijah, she could have ate that little bit of meal and oil and died. But because she was obedient, God took care of her and her house so, and he took care of the man of God, because Elijah was obedient unto God. I believe that God is going to take care of his people. We may not understand how he's going to do it, when he's going to do it, and how he's going to do it, but understand, God sees the future. He sees your life. He sees my life. Every trouble, trial, and tribulation, and everything you go through is to help us to be stronger and better Christians and servants of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Here's my prayers. I wrote the end of this. Lord, I will obey you when you ask me. If it's difficult, give me strength to do what you've asked me to do. Lord, you know the best for my life, and you know the situation that we're in. Listen, every morning I get up, and I quote Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. Lord, let me not trust unto myself. Let me not look unto myself, but let me look to you for all things, and lead me, guide me, and teach me. Folks, listen today. We're living in difficult times. But I am persuaded in my mind that we serve a God that's not going to ask you to do any more than you're capable of doing. And in everything that happens, if you, when he challenges you to obey, just say, God, I'm going to trust you. I'm going to do it. Just like a little child. When you, when you tell a little child to jump in your arm, that little child don't know if you're going to catch him or not, but he puts his hands out, and by faith he jumps that you're going to catch him. And when you catch him, he just loves on you and hugs on you and hangs on for dear life. I'm like that little child. I'm jumping in the arms of God, and I'm trusting God to take care of me. The other times God asks his brother Slater to do things, and I say, Lord, how in the world can we do that? How in the world can we accomplish that? Well, I've learned a long time ago not to question God. Just get a hold of the horns, hang on, and let God do the battle. And if we'll let God do the, the fighting and the leading and preparing the way, I assure you that God will never disappoint you. He will never let you down. He will lead you through the battle. Don't forget to pray for all of our people. Tomorrow morning at 10 o'clock, tune in for Brother Charlie. And uh, I've got an announcement. I want you to listen. And please don't get mad at Brother Slater. We're not done with this COVID-19. The numbers are starting to go back up in the hospital. Even the medical staff, they was four nurses last week came down with COVID-19. Three respiratory therapists. And this is all in one facility downriver. The numbers are spiking up. Don't get relaxed. Don't go to sleep. Please remember, those of you that come to worship on Sunday morning, you are welcome. We want you to maintain social distance. When you get out of your car, follow the CDC guidelines. Put the mask on. Don't take it off until you leave. No hugging. No shaking hands. No kissing nobody. Listen, I wanted to hug Brother Tommy uh, uh, so bad last week. Me and Tom, we are so close. He is he is like my brother, and I know him and Irma are going through so much, and we stood in the parking lot, and both of us six foot apart, and I told him I want to hug you so bad, and he started to cry, and I said, stop that. We'll get through this. Listen, I if you want to get mad at somebody, you get mad at Brother Slater, but I'm telling you, you can't be hugging, and you can't be shaking hands on in the services, okay? I love you. If you continue to do it, last week the police came by. Everything was good. They checked us out. We had our mask on, we had social distancing, and we, we passed with fi flying colors. But if they saw us hugging and shaking hands, we would be shut down. Don't let it be seen on the cameras that you are shaking hands because everybody sees that. And trust me, there are certain people in this state would love to shut us down. I'm not complaining, I'm just telling you, if you come to church, follow the guidelines. Wear your mask, wash your hands. If you've got any symptoms, cold, fever, anything, don't come in. Stay home. We're going to take your temp, check you out. We're trying to do everything we can to keep you healthy and safe during these difficult times. Don't forget, Brother Charlie will be back on the morning at 10 o'clock. Get your coffee cup if you can. And I was a little late this morning getting tuned in, but I did listen, me and Miss Kim, after we got some things done this morning. And um, we'll be back on tomorrow afternoon at um, 4 30 and we ask that you continue to pray and then don't forget sunday morning at nine o'clock sunday school and then at 11 o'clock morning worship 
We do invite you to come out and be with us. Just follow the guidelines that people have laid out for you. We had a great service last week. It's so good to see people come out. And I love the smiles. And folks, we're going to get through this. God's going to bless us in a mighty way. Let's pray before we leave the air. Father in heaven above, be with our people. Lord, let us always look to you, the author and finisher of our faith. Lord, let us be like the little widow woman, Lord. When we don't see a way that any way out, let us trust you. Lord, let us start dealing in our own circumstances and let us rely on you to take care of our circumstances and the situations that's in our life. Lord, let us feast from your table. Bless your people this evening. Everyone that's listening today, in Christ's name we pray, and amen. Until tomorrow morning with Brother Charlie, may God bless you and have a great evening.